This location is located in an industrial park that originally was supporting Massey Ferguson Tractor Company. That was back in 1970, and then that closed down and the area kind of became more vacant. This, the last use that I can tell, it was a kind of a, a small manufacturing place and warehouse for fishing lures. Oh. The fishing industry is pretty big here in, in the, this area. But originally, it was a small metal working plant that hadn't been occupied since 1998. My wife and I live here in the neighborhood, and that's why I started really looking into what we can do in the neighborhood to help develop economic opportunity for people that live here. This food system seemed to be a lot of opportunity to be able to take advantage of the problems, the distribution. You know, when you're, all your food's coming from California, Arizona, Florida, it's not the freshest, it's costly to get here, and it doesn't support the local economy really. So I started studying about different ways to be able to grow year-round, and that's where we came upon this vertical controlled agriculture. So we do about 180 to 200 pounds of basil a week we harvest in this 3,000 square foot area here. So what we have, you know, this is, you know, it's just R5 Owen Corning insulation that comes in an eight-foot sheet that we have a template that we drill holes in. There's 144 plants in each tray. So there's a process, and the process starts with seeds in the nursery, and it grows right through in eight weeks to where we harvest it. So it's eight weeks from seed to sale, or seed to cash, or whatever you want to call it. So there's three things that really make this a, a really efficient system. One is the water. We use Detroit City water. The one thing that we've always had in Detroit is great water because of, the, of Lake Huron and the, the river and stuff. So we don't have to add a lot of items to make the, the balance the water out. So you have the water with the right nutrient mix. We have a granular and liquid nutrient mix that we monitor every single day. And then the lights are, are tuned to the right spectrum of light that helps us grow basil really fast. So you've got the water, the lights, and then airflow. You heard of that big fan we walked in. That airflow, that fan ties into a louver system in the back that brings a lot of air in from outdoors. And so it recirculates the air. And then we have smaller fans that also help circulate the air in here. And that's very important because one of the primary elements in our nutrients is nitrogen. And our air that we breathe is 70% nitrogen. We use oxygen, but it's really nitrogen that we're breathing in. And so what happens is the air is coming in and it's bringing nitrogen in. So you have the water with the nitrogen coming up through the root system and then nitrogen hitting the leaves and it helps it when it gets to the right size, just expand really quickly. You can kind of see the progress of how the system works. You got, this is the week that we just planted, okay? This is a week older. This is two weeks older. And this is three weeks older. This one's right, this is the fourth week. And this one will plant or will harvest this coming week. And there's the size of our leaves. And you never see leaves like this in a grocery store. And the reason it's unique is if you buy basil at the store, you typically buy it in a clamshell that has stems on it and leaves about the size of your thumb. With ours, there's no stems, and the leaves are about the size of your hand. And you never see, you never see bays like this in a grocery store, ever. But better yet, the flavor's tremendous. Really nice. So the, fla the flavor's real strong compared to what you get from you know, somewhere else. Uh, right. The shelf life is tremendous. Um, so with the lighting, it seems like it changes. Those are lights we originally put in here, okay? Which are really, really good lights, but they're also significantly more expensive than these lights and they get us not a great deal more yield. In our selection process of the lights, we really, we start off with what we had, a white light, very large induction lamp that was put off a lot of heat. So you had to have more space between the plants so we couldn't get as many levels on there. So we knew we didn't want to do that. So we started researching. Here there's some green light or some natural light in the LED node that it gives a little bit of natural light to help them grow. And these other ones here are? These are just kind of a red and blue spectrum. If you looked at these side by side, they'd be pretty much the same as far as yield goes, but it's the expense of these lights plus the installation costs doesn't offset. If we had to do, right now we have about 400 and almost 500 lights in here. If we had to do 400 lights like this, it would have been probably 3x what our other cost was. Okay. And with those, we have to have an electrician install them. With these, we can do all the installation ourselves. Okay. And so, Kind of the last thing we have is 
we have the, t the watering systems you saw here with the 200 gallon tanks that, f that services the whole, the whole tower. Here we have 1,000 gallon tanks, and what they do is they service every tower down the road there. So these, because we have additional height in the building, we can put five levels up there. So there's 25 levels. The, each one of these tanks holds 1,050 gallons, okay? And what it, it services all four of those towers there. And each rack will take about 150 gallons to fill all five trays. So what will happen is the, the water will go down from this level down to the, well, actually, it will be about this level, but we got to fill it on Monday. So it'll go down here to about 400 gallons or so. We just keep it at that level until we harvest. And then we, what we do is once we harvest, we drain everything out of every, every place. We clean everything, put fresh water in, fresh nutrients in, and then start the whole, then start the whole system up again and then replant it. So does this use less water than conventional? It uses a lot less water than conventional farming. It, in California, where the big lettuce growers are, it takes about seven and a half gallons of water to grow one head of lettuce. In our farm here, it takes three tenths of a gallon of water, 90% less. So it's a very efficient way to be able to do it. Water is pumped all the way to the top. There's a pipe that runs across the top, and then in each growing system, there's a valve that the water drains into the top, and then just gravity feeds down to the bottom level, and it feeds back into this little tank and pumps it back into can you control those from a, how do you control all these valves? Well, I mean, there's all kinds of new technology that's coming on board if you want to spend a lot of money yeah. to be able to do this all electronically. Our philosophy is to employ people, not to employ technology. And so that's why we, we made a conscious effort not to do, you know, do the high tech versions of these things. Yeah, so what we do is come up here, just pull it out and then clip it take the whole plant down, put it in a basket, take it in the back, and then pull the leaves off. We employ you know, myself plus four other people from the neighborhood. I've known two of them since they were about 12 years old, since so being in the neighborhood, so it's really good to see those young people have an opportunity right here where they don't have to worry about transportation to get somewhere else in the city of Detroit. We have about 52 retail locations that sell our product. Right now we're selling about 160 pounds of basil, 1,600 servings a week. So we're working with a couple wholesalers right now to try to work out what we can do with them. The problem with working with a wholesaler is our product is so much different and it's such more delicate than what they're used to buying. In what sense? Because we harvest only the leaf. When they harvest their product, they harvest the plant at the root. They're smaller leaves so they can compress them and put them into a bag and flatten them down and sell them. So what's the advantage of it? Do you think taste and flavor are different? The taste and flavor is different. It's a really vibrant flavor compared to the other. Its product is fresher and you're supporting the local economy. Health-wise could be different too? There's not a whole lot of health benefit for basil, but I would say in kale, it's definitely a health advantage. This is where most of them germinate. These rows down here in the bottom will all be planted on Monday through Friday. And then the ones with the black covers over there were all planted just last Friday. And we leave the black covers on for about four days, five days. It kind of replicates the seed being in soil, being in darkness, and it germinates. They're planted in a material that's called rock wool. And rock wool is basalt that's churned up real fine, heated to a high temperature, and then poured into a mold that makes this blanket and there's 200 plants on there, and they'll stay in this area for four weeks. And does this take much maintenance? Yeah, you have to dip these a couple times a week. We can tell by just by touching if there's moisture in the rock wool or the weight of it. So it's eight weeks, four weeks in here, four weeks out there, and harvest. How difficult is it to be really precise with uh, a living thing? Because you are here building in a precise way uh, living organisms. So. Are you able to sort of control the whole process? Uh, you know the outcome? The outcome we're looking for is nine to 10 pounds of weight per level. During the week, we know the, the readings that we have to have in the water to make that happen. So we're, that's what we do here, we chart everything. If we see that it's out of balance or not, not the right numbers, then we can alter it. This is the EC, the EC is is the electrical charge of the water, which is the nutrient value, okay? And then the other one is the pH. 
you want the pH on the lower level, so we bring it down to about 6.0 to 5.8. What, what happens when you're off? What will happen is that the, the plants will get a little bit discolored a little bit, but more importantly, it doesn't grow as well. So you're trying to fine tune this so you can get maximum yield. Exactly, exactly. And then we also just monitor it visually because one of the things that impacts us are critters, our bugs, which are aphids and thrips. So aphids and thrips, so we watch how those are, and if we, we, we catch it early enough so we can rid the plants of it. So can you tell me what kind of lights you're using? They're LED lights. They use like six-tenths of an amp per bar. They put off about 70 degrees of heat, which is relatively low for, for lighting. Not for LED, but we had some other lights here at one point that were like 140 degrees, but really hot. I think my lack electric bill was about 21,000 kilowatt hours, which equates to about $3,400. So are you able to make a profit? We're getting real close to making a profit. I just read a study here, and they say vertical farms right now are taking about six years to get to a consistent profitability. And you see that, that's down from eight years, so we're making progress. This whole area here is meant for expansion, for grow more products. <clears throat> well, we got these free planted here, so you got to do a little bit of work to do all the plumbing and stuff in here, but you know, it's pretty much ready to go. We got all the equipment for it. And one of the guys that we work with to help get the system going, we cut all the pieces, you know, measure them all out, put them all together, and then just, you know, it's pretty simple once you understand it. So. It is? Yeah. Yeah. That's great. So now you can do it yourself. Yeah. I didn't have to dream it up. I just had to do it, so. I didn't want to be rely on grants and, and being a nonprofit, so we set up this as a social enterprise, as an L3C enterprise. The building we got for $35,000. That was one of the good things. Whoever owned it and decommissioned it took all the valuable stuff out of it so people wouldn't come in and destroy it. So it was pretty much intact. We went out initially and raised about $350,000 to get the lights in for the first phase, and then Subsequent rounds of funding, we've gone to about $1.4 million in investment when we, when we built this whole, the whole thing out. You envision a future, you think it's possible that uh, stores will have a facility similar to yours, close to the place where they sell? Yes, and it's already happening. There's a lot of big money coming into this space. And I think in parts of the world, where land scarcity, that's gonna, it's going to be a big thing. You're, you're seeing a lot of this type of stuff in Japan and, and Singapore right now. My idea was to grow inside a building 12 months out of the year, whether it's 10 below zero or 90 degrees outside, but we can grow year round. Because we wanted it not to be seasonal employment, but we wanted it to be year round employment. <laughs>